guys welcome back to my channel coffee and pixie dust for those of you who do not know i am Allie, and today's video is going to be the 20 books that i recommend from my reading during quarantine i am still reading but i really wanted to share with you guys the 20 books that i really really enjoyed during the quarantine period that i had so i hope you guys enjoy this please give a big thumbs up if you do if you're not subscribed please don't subscribe it would really make my day and if you're a reader like me let me know if you have any suggestions in there. I am looking for more books. So the first one that I have is the book that made me fall in love with Rachel Hollis. And this is Girl, Wash Your Face, Stop Believing the Lies About Who You Are So You Can Become Who You Are Meant to Be. I fell in love with this book. It is definitely a self-help book. Kind of like a self personal development self-help book. But I really, really liked this book. It's like literally my favorite. And I'm going to actually read to you my favorite chapter. Well, part of my favorite chapter. Let me see what page was it again. 43. So it says, The Lie. Loving him is enough for me. I fell in love the first time I saw him. Doesn't that sound dramatic? Probably. I'm not, I'm not even sure I was aware of it at the time, but the scene plays out so clearly in my memory. I went out to the lobby to get to my boss's 11 o'clock appointment. That was the only, there was only one man standing there. His back was to me, hands deep down in his pockets, and he had a white, he had a beat up leather messenger bag slung over his shoulder. I noticed the bag first. I remember thinking it was so cool that this guy, that this guy wore business clothes, business clothes, and, but carried a worn in leather bag instead of a briefcase. Excuse me, I said, I said, are you here to meet Kevin? So, and then it talks about, like, inner mind, all this story, and all of these things. And then it talks about her date and everything. But my favorite part of this was when her telling her story. Um, and about how he treated her and etc. But here's the deal. I'm not the only woman who ever let a man treat her badly. It's important to tell my story because I believe some of you may find yourself in a similar situation now. And just like me, you're so deeply inside the forest, you can't see the trees. I, in telling my story and my truth, I hope it can help some of you make better choices better choices than I did. So you, so see your re reality for what it actually is. But here's the ugly truth. I was a booty call. The preacher's daughter, the one who hadn't ever been out on a date, the conservative girl, good girl. I drove to this man's house every single night he asked me to and pretended that it didn't gut me when he wouldn't acknowledge me during the day. And it like, and talks about how it took her a year to like really move on. But it's my favorite chapter in the book because it really truly talks about things that we don't normally talk about as women whether we're the good girl the conservative girl or not i come from a cons i come from a conservative home i was raised military i am what by my definition moderate conservative but i have a, i had a child out of wedlock and i allowed myself to be believed that we were headed in a certain direction and that we were serious and that we were going to be more than what we were. In reality, I was just the girl that was convenient and was just basically for sex. So that chapter really hit home for me just because of the fact that it just, it really hit home for me. The next up is another book that I have with me. The rest of them I do not is Stamped. Jason Reynolds, I, Braham Exati. This book is so, so good. And racism, anti-racism in you. It's such a good read. I highly, highly, highly recommend reading it. I learned so much about history as a history buff that I did not know about. And I'm absolutely obsessed with this book. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I can't. And I and when also like it should be noted that this is not meant to be a history book. Like and throughout the book, she always says this is not a history book. But on the back it says, this is not a history book. This book is about the here and the now, a book about race. And I just absolutely love it. So I'll read um, The Thief Known as Racism Around the World. The construct of race has always been used to gain and keep power or to create dynamics to separate and silence. Racist ideas are woven into the fabric of this country. And the first step to building an anti-racist America is acknowledging America's racist past and present. This book takes you on the journey, showing you how racist ideas started and were spread and how this how they can be discredited. 
Through a scripting, fast-paced, and energizing narrative, Stamp shines a light in the many indigenous forms of racist ideas and on ways you can identify and stamp out racist thoughts leading to a better future. And that is just that. So the next book is The Gift of Forgiveness by Katherine Schwarzenegger Pratt. If you've struggled with, um, if you've struggled with forgiveness in the past, whether it be forgiving yourself or forgiving others, I highly, highly recommend this book. I have always struggled with forgiveness, um, whether that be somebody that I know or somebody that I don't know. I've always struggled with forgiveness and forgiving myself, and it was a really, really good read, and I just highly, highly recommend it. It definitely like opened my eyes and helped me with my own forgiveness issues. Number four is Dirty Sexy Politics by Meghan McCain. If you are a moderate Republican like myself, you know that sometimes we're not always we're not always made to feel welcome by the Republican Party. We can be a little bit kind of like on the line of like so an example would be my belief, like most believe that homosexuality is wrong. And everything and are not like for gay rights I am for gay rights sometimes that makes me a little bit unwelcomed at Republican things but that's just an example I'm definitely more of a moderate Republican a lot of my views are Republican but I'm definitely more on the moderate side of the Republican party so it was just really really cool to read from another moderate Republican Everyone has their views of Megan McCain, but that's mine. Number five is Red Scarf Girl, Jai Lang Jing. That was a recommendation from Too Cool for Middle School. Um, it was a while ago, so I'm trying to remember what it was about, but I'm really, like, spacing. Um, I highly, highly recommend it. It was in her books for the top for 10 books on Asian American History Month, and I absolutely loved it. I would highly, highly recommend it. Number six is Fear is My Homebody by Jolie Holler. That is another um, self-help book. If you struggle with fear and anxiety like I do, I just highly, highly recommend that book. Number seven is Beyond Colorblind by Sarah Shin. This is another book that's really great for anti-racism. Um, I highly, highly recommend it. It's just a perspective that I never looked at it through the lens of that. So it was just a really, really good read. Um, number eight is Girl Code by Carly for Lee. Carly for Leah. If again, if you, it's another personal development book. If you struggle with anxiety, I highly recommend it. If you struggle with comparing yourself to others, because I'm gonna be honest here, that's me. It's a really, really good read. And number nine is Everything Is Figure Audible by by Maria Forleo. That is definitely um another personal development book. But sometimes we get caught up in the chaos, trying to figure out if like if we can, if I, if this is even figure audible, etc. And we sometimes forget that everything is figure audible and that we can actually figure things out and etc. So I highly, highly recommend that. Number 10 is A Year of Biblical Woman by Rachel Held Evans. This was a really good book. She lives like women in the Bible did. And I feel like it's a really, really good perspective and really, really awesome read because, um, we don't talk about things that I feel were talked about in this book, like modesty and the fact that women used to like have to sleep outside in sheds when they were on their period. I just feel it was a really good read. Highly, highly recommend it. Number 11, with all due respect, by Nikki Haley. I am obsessed with Nikki Haley. I don't know what it is, but I just want to say like pre-Trump, I was obsessed with Nikki Haley to begin with. So, like, I just want to put that disclaimer out there because sometimes the whole Trump thing comes into play. And I'm not really here to talk about Trump. I'm here to talk about, like, Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley, I've always been obsessed with her. Partly because, like, I've always tried to look for conservative women and influences to really, like, listen to. And I just really, really liked that. Um, I really, really liked her book. I really, really liked her as a person. Um, I just... I love what she did with the UN. I just, for me as a military daughter, it really like, it was a really good read because I think we forget, especially like I can forget that like, I just want to say that like I went through a period of darkness and anger because my dad was deployed and whether that was in 
intentional or not, a lot of my views changed. I went from being somebody who kind of grew up basically like my dad's like super Republican and my mom's kind of just like more moderate. Um, I went from that situation to like completely flipping my switch to like liberal. I hated the war. I hated everything. And people are allowed to feel that way. People are entitled to feel that way. And I'm and I understand where you're coming from. I just want to put that there. But when my dad came home, I started doing research for myself. I started looking into my viewpoints and looking for, like, you know, the conservative and the liberal side. And I really wound in the place of, like, moderate Republican. That's, like, where I landed. And a lot of that is due to, the, like, education and putting myself in that so that's kind of how and then and then when I found out Nikki Haley was writing a book because I loved her so much I knew I needed to read it and it is like perfectly explains everything and I just it's a really really good read and whether you're for Trump or not for Trump I really really recommend reading it because there's a lot of things like the Iran deal that people don't know the ink, the ink, the, I want to word this right, the ins and outs of. And there was a lot of things that I didn't know for reading that. And I'm really glad that I read it because I'm arming myself with education. I am not saying anything negative about any president. I'm just saying that there was a lot of things that like we didn't know because whether we want to believe it or not, a lot of the media is biased and I am not saying CNN or Fox News, th th they both are. Whether they want to call it like they see it or not, they both are. And that's just how I view it. And I feel a lot of that has to do with the fact that media, people, and personnel and stations are allowed to, which I didn't know this, I just looked, donate to presidential campaigns. I feel like it should not be allowed if you're in, that's just, that's a whole nother tangent. But that is number 12 is blind ambition. Now, I wasn't around for President Nixon's um, thing where I wasn't old enough to understand. Um, but I've always kind of been intrigued with the Watergate story just because like, I, just because, you know, he was impeached, but he chose to leave. And like, I feel like when we talk about Nixon, we don't get into full details and I am a big history person and I wanted to learn more so I chose Blind Ambition by John W. Dean who is actually the person the lawyer for Nixon who ended up testifying against Nixon and for me that was also something I was interested in because I always felt like the people that Nixon had close to him were like ride or die blindly I don't want to say blindly follow, but like ride or die, like very serious about like, you know, this, 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 etc. And I was always curious how he did the switch to like go from Nixon's side to like testifying against him. And it was intriguing to me that he was a lawyer because I did not know he was a lawyer. There was a lot that I didn't know. Um, like I said, I'm really into history. So that was another in. Um, number 13 was Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. Obviously, the Harvey Weinstein case had dominated, has dominated the news prior to COVID. I feel like it was the main story before COVID, but I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Um, and I always believe, majority of the time, believe women first. Um, I believe that women should be believed, even if it's just a one. Um, but I've always kind of struggled with Hollywood for me, especially after like the Woody Allen allegations came forward. And then, um, you know, um, R. Kelly, I just always felt like there were separate rules for Hollywood elite versus everyday people. Um, and I just really, really liked Ronan Farrow's work. He did a really great job. And I also love that he touched on his relationship with his sister in regards to the allegations because I think sometimes people forget that, like, when people, uh, I don't, 
I want to start off by saying that I believe Dylan, <laughs> number one. Number two, I also feel that, like, people often forget that, like, when you're accusing a family member, it can, things can get awkward and it becomes, like, a really quick, like, divide. And I don't, and I just really, really like that he touched on it. Number 14 was Blend by Machina Tarifi. Blend is the perfect book to your co-parenting. That's all I'm going to say about that. Best co-parenting co -parenting book I've ever read. 15, The Curated Closet. If you are looking to downsize and get a capsule wardrobe, I highly recommend that book. Fortitude by Dan Crenshaw, another Republican uh, person I am obsessed with. Um, if, it's just a really good read, and I love his attitude, and I love like his just positive spin on things. And it was just a really, really great read. Number 17, Open Book by Jessica Simpson. I have always kind of been a fan of Jessica Simpson. I was a little hard on her when Nick and her divorced, but I really, really liked her perspective. I don't feel like we talk. I just really, really loved the book. She was so honest, real, and raw, and it was great. And I also want to say that there's two sides to every story, so I just, I always feel like um, the women get beat up a lot in the public when it comes to divorces but I definitely feel like there was there's two sides to every story that's all I'm gonna say number 18 is searching for Sylvie Lee it's a really really good read I read that a while ago so I can't remember much of it and number 19 the splendid in the veil the splendid in the veil is all about it William Winston Churchill it was a really good read again I feel like Winston Churchill is like an important part of like World War II but I feel like we don't talk about him enough so that was a really good read and the last one is a total money makeover by dave ramsey i'm currently doing the baby steps so i had to include that one so i hope you guys enjoyed this video please get a big thumbs up if you do if you're not subscribed please go and subscribe and i'll see you all next time